what's going on happy people? Robert asked me to fill in for him since he's up in Canada and Ashley has the girls at home. So I have all night to take you guys hog hunting. But first, we need to have the shooting range. So let's go. All right, you guys, we made it. And this is what I'm hunting with tonight. This is the Howa 6.5 Creedmoor with the Burris Eliminator 3 on top. I am shooting the Howa Precision Hunter 143 grains. Um, and I'm really excited because Rob raves about this round and I cannot wait to shoot it right now. So let's get started. Okay, 102 yards. This thing is deadly, you guys. Oh my goodness, this thing is awesome. Awesome. All right, at 100 yards, being like that close to three rounds just then, not bad. All right, you guys, that's the same gun that Sarah has been hunting with. She came out here, made sure it was all sighted in, got everything ready. And unfortunately, Sarah's grandma recently passed away, so she had to fly up there and spend time with her family. David has an amazing story, and we're out here trying to kill a hog for a very specific reason, but I guarantee you, if this works right, we're gonna make a lot of people happy. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a good feeling that is. Is that your first hog ever? That is our first animal, like truly. Now, I mean, check this out. The first day that I met David, when we came out here, this is the same food spot. Is this plot, the exact spot? But we filmed from the other side. Oh no. Yeah, good shot, boy! Woo! <laughs> Smoked him! <'em. laughs> Let's go. Right there, baby. Hold on. That's it. What did I say about that red tip? It means business. <laughs> That's right. Smoke yes. them. So, literally, you guys, this is my gun. Howa 6.5 Creedmoor Burris Eliminator 3 shooting Hornady 143 grain ELDX. What? Hey. Smoke them. You know it? By that red tip. It means business. So, when we were building our water feature, we, we came out here and he was filming. He just wanted to come out to the ranch and be a part of this. And um, shooting the same exact gun. Dude, how crazy is that? That's right, but uh, super cool. Now, this hog may seem like just another wild hog, but it's a very, very, very special hog. It's his first hog, and we came out here and killed it for a very specific reason. You're gonna see that now. That's absolutely perfect. Yes, sir. I mean, bro. You can't go to the grocery store and get a better animal to eat than that right there. That's perfect. I'm telling you, them boys are gonna be tickled pink. All right, you guys, we'll see you at the house. We're gonna go clean this hog, and then we're gonna be cooking tonight. Because there's so much to this video, we're gonna make a completely separate video teaching Mr. David here how to clean a hog. So if you wanna see us clean this hog, just click in the video description below, and you'll see it there. Otherwise, we'll see you in the kitchen. All right, you guys, we are back in the kitchen. I've actually let this hog meat relax in this ice water for about two days, and it's doing great. We'll pull out a ham first. That's one of them hind quarters. And got a big, huge roasting pan here. That's one of the hind quarters. I always want to start on the inside. You could cook this with the, uh, with the bone in it, 
but I feel like there's a there's a little gland in inside of this hindquarter that if you can get it out it, it's a lot better it makes the meat a lot better so all you've got to do is cut that bone out just like that there you go and the inside here right here you'll see that vein that vein will come down to it cut this gland out you can tell it's a healthy hog because that's just in perfect shape I mean, when we pulled up to that hog, I knew, no questions asked, this is gonna be a great animal. And then I'll just take my knife, make some little slits in there, and put that meat right in there. We're gonna do that with all the quarter. Now, there you go, there's some ribs. Look at that, beautiful. We're gonna literally put the whole hog in there. This is another hind quarter. It's such, ooh, look at that, I can get to that gland right there very easy. We'll just cut this one. You know what, I wanna just see, I'm gonna leave this one on the bone. Still make some, I'm gonna leave the bone in there, see if it makes a difference. Here's your back straps. We're gonna, even though we're gonna slow cook it, I'm still gonna cut that connective tissue off. This silver skin just will make it a lot more pleasant to eat. Yeah. As you watch this video, you're gonna see this is a very special, special meal. When you slow cook a meal like we're about to do, you really, I mean, you don't have to cut off all the silver skin. And then, so that's the, that's the shoulder that had some of that damage on it. Just take your knife and just cut as much of that out of there as you can. This is why I love this woods and water knife. If you watch the skinning video, this knife is just made for outdoorsmen. If you learn to skin and learn to process game with a longer knife, you'll really fall in love with it. And then all this little bloodshot stuff, just cut it out. There you go. Set this right in there. I like that. Throw them two tenderloins in there. That's just a pot of love right there, y'all. I'm gonna do a combination of Everglades cactus dust. This is gonna give it a nice smoky, barbecuey, lovely flavor. And you can be you can be liberal because there's a lot to go around here. There you go. As soon as you start putting it on, you're gonna to say to yourself, "Dad, gum it, this is gonna be good." And I'm gonna finish it with some Everglades original. Now, you don't want to add salt. This is all you need, right there. Then. Take one packet of rosemary, just put that rosemary on there, and as it starts to wilt, it'll start to wilt down and start to exude some of them oils out. Next thing you know, you're gonna have a love potion going on in there. Now you're gonna take yourself two Vidalia onions. These are sweet onions. Make sure they're nice and fresh and cut them into quarters take that quarter and just dig it down there because as this comes to life them onions will just start creating flavor because we're gonna cover this all up then we're gonna take baby carrots now these carrots are gonna add flavor more than we're worried about eating them these carrots are just gonna add flavor. That's what we're really looking for with them. Take some olive oil. There you go. I got a question for you. Does that look good? If so, drop a thumbs up and stay tuned because I promise you, when we take this food to cook it, there's a very special meaning behind it and I'm so stoked to be doing this. Hey you guys, 
So it's 9.38. I've got the oven set at 215 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, that's heavy. And we're gonna set the whole thing right in there. Now this is kind of a tight fit, so. There you go. So it's 9.40 p.m. I've got the oven set at 215 degrees. I'm going to bed. Sarah gets here tomorrow, so I'm so stoked. I'm gonna try to get some sleep. Literally, we can cook this all night. It's 9.40, wake up. We'll give it like 10 or 12 hours. We'll see you in the morning because this is gonna be amazing. To say I'm excited would be an understatement. We cooked this all night long and I've let it cool now for about an hour. That's what you're looking for. You want that bone? Oh yeah. It's always terrible when the bones just pull right out. Slow cooked overnight, love and goodness. And tender, this probably, tender isn't even a proper word for it. This is amazing. Now all we've gotta do, look at that. What do you think, David? Looks pretty dang good. You guys are gonna think it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> right? So typically, shoulders, shoulder bones, are the hardest bone to bone out. But if you slow cook them like I did with this one, the meat falls right off of it. Mm, mm, mm. They just come right out. Oh yeah. So look at that. That's an entire pan full of nothing but love and goodness. Now, whenever I quartered out those onions and threw them in here, you can take the onions and start pulling them apart and just putting them on top of your meat like this. So then when the guys start making their sandwiches, they can take out this onion and put it right on top. So this is gonna be a part of the entire meal. How beautiful is that? All right, so we are here at Tire Kingdom right now. This is the point of the whole show. Last week, David had low air pressure on his tire, on his new car that he bought with money he won in Saudi Arabia. Well, like a lot of 18 year olds today, he didn't even know how to put air in his tire, which is crazy, but it's true. So he comes here, asks for help, and one of the fellas here was super kind, walked around, showed him all the points of his car, showed him how to check the air pressure, how to fill it up, and a lot of really cool stuff. So David, being the kind-hearted guy he is, goes to give him a tip. Well, whenever he gave him the tip, the guy said, look, man, if I take the tip, it doesn't help my team. So maybe the next time you're in a store, pick up some Gatorades or something, of course, then the whole team can enjoy it. Well, David went over to Walmart, bought like $200 worth of stuff, and I was like, holy cow. I was like, let's do something better. So that's why we went out to the ranch, went on the hunt, cleaned the hog, cooked the hog, and now we have all these sides so that we can come here and do something really special for all the guys. We're making lunch at Tire Kingdom. The funny thing is, no one knows what we're doing right now. We just showed up. Cool. What's going on, happy people? Back and forth, baby. So this is why I'm in your office right now. Uh, about three weeks ago, me and me and David here, we represented the United States in, in the first ever international fishing tournament in Saudi Arabia. Teams from all over the world, we played second in that tournament. David made enough money to come back and buy his first car he's ever had. He's from California. I hired him to be a part of my YouTube channel. He came over here. He's never owned a car, and he's never been around a car. So after buying the car, that one right out there, he got a low he got a low uh, pressure sensor on his on his car. Said, "Hey, you need air in your tires." So he pulled in right here. He came in. A guy by the name of Steve Rogers works here. Went out, showed him all around the car, helped him air up the tires, and just showed him some things to look for. Just awesome. And he said, "How much do you?" He says, "You don't owe me anything." So David pulls out twenty bucks to tip him. And he said, "Man, if I take this twenty dollars." My team doesn't benefit from this. 
He goes, so the next time you're at the store, if you can pick up some Gatorades or waters or some snacks for my team, bring that by. Then we can all benefit from it. So David goes and spends 200 bucks at Walmart buying snacks and all kinds of stuff. And he tells me, yo, this is what happened. I'm like, we're doing this bigger than that. So David had then never been on a wild hog hunt. So two days ago, I took David out on his first wild hog hunt. He killed the hog that has now been slow roasted in that pan. So we, we, we slow roasted it for, at 200 degrees for 12 hours, pulled it all, and now I want you guys, all these snacks, all these drinks, all this food is for y'all because of what Steve did. And I want you to know, man, no job is small, no job is big. We're just all people here, and you never know whenever just one kind thing that you can do for somebody, how big of an impact it makes. And so for me, my team, that's my wife. That, these are some fans over here. From all of us, man, I want to tell all you guys, thank you so much. It means the world. He's like a, he's like a surrogate son to me, and it means a lot to me what you guys did for him. Now, let's see. Thank you. Is that good? That's awesome, bro. That's awesome, man. So this is what it's all about, you know? I encourage all of you. So many of you try to send, like, fan mail to me. And I love fan mail. But, man, what would mean more to me than anything is if you're in a gas station or if you're in a grocery store or if you're in a restaurant, if you can just take five bucks or ten bucks and pay it forward to somebody, pay for someone's drink, pay for someone's yeah, meal, throw ten bucks in gas for somebody, man, and you will, ch you will actually make a difference because that means a ton to people so this to me is like the biggest blessing of my life like i love doing stuff like that. thank you man okay dave you gotta have a plate of your own food man we gotta hear yeah. and see what you think i was just waiting for all the boys to get our food so okay so good. Yeah. all right so now i'm gonna try this sandwich that i've been waiting a couple days to try <laughs> but um let's give it a go I probably got some stuff, but so. good stuff, man. Awesome. That's what it's all about right there. When David came here from California, he would have never imagined going out, hunting a wild hog, cleaning it, and then cooking it himself. Not especially not eating it. Like that's like the star point right there that it would never happen. Right? Mm -hmm. But now he understands what it is to be connected to your food. Went out, hunted it, came back, cleaned it, helped cook it eating it and sharing it with all these great people, you guys. So, look, man, I love all y'all. I would not have the opportunity to do this if it were not for you. We've never advertised our channel ever, nowhere. We have grown one million percent by word of mouth, by your word of mouth. And so for that, I say thank you. And take care, God bless, and we are gone. <laughs>